Good afternoon, everybody. Um, we're going to do alarm notification next with Greg Hicks out of our Bedford, Nova Scotia, Canada office. And this should be an uh, interesting subject. So take it away, Greg. Hi, everybody. Everybody have fun last night? Yeah, yeah, I had fun too. Um, luckily, Dan came and posted, posted my bail. So uh, just kidding. I didn't, I didn't need to be bailed out. Um, so I'm a, I'm a developer with, uh, with Trihedral, and I am responsible to a large degree for a lot of what happens in alarm notifications. So if it's not working for you, you know who to blame. Um, when, I was, when I was a kid, my parents were medical missionaries in Central Africa, in Burundi. And about 1965, there was some trouble, and the government... Um, in order to forestall communications they couldn't control, came and took away our means of communicating with headquarters in the States. Uh, and to do that, they took away our shortwave receivers. I don't know why they didn't take the transmitter, but they came and they took away our, our receiver, which was a big box, yay by yay. Um, Luckily, my dad had had the foresight to bring a little transistor radio that could receive shortwave with him. And the moral of that story is that it's always good to have a backup or an alternate way of doing things. Um, so the first part of the presentation is going to be a discussion of some of the alternative, um, some of the options that we have for you for doing alarm notification, as, as in um, voice communication or paging or, t or, or uh, text messaging. Um, we, still have, we still have customers out there who are using pagers. It's, uh, it, it seems a little antiquated, but sometimes in a, in a factory or shop floor environment, it's the best way to communicate. Anymore, it, it's hard, at least in our neck of the woods, to find a service provider who will do it, but they're, they're doing it using their own their own transponders. Um, and uh, so that's still, gets harder and harder even to test it, but uh, it's still a viable alternative. Um, this part's gonna go pretty quick. So if you wanna send text message, messages, and te text messages are one of my favorite um, means for alarm notification. There's three alternatives, really. You can either get a cell modem, like the one in the picture. Um, you, you need to get a data plan and a SIM card for it. Um, you can use Twilio. Twilio has a um, facility for sending text messages. Or you can use compact email. Most um, cell service providers have an email gateway. Um, so you do something like prepend your, your um, number um, to, the, to the gateway. So it would be like 902-719-1412 at vm.ca or something like that. Um, interactive voice, also two alternatives. Um, there's using a voice modem and, uh, or using Twilio. Now, voice modems are kind of an aging technology. And I, th I think as Barry pointed out in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the opening, um, no, it was in the, in the why we do what we do session, said that um, Microsoft doesn't really support voice modems very well anymore. They just don't work. Um, on the other hand, you know, we've been refining our TSP, our voice modem interface, Originally based on the on the Microsoft um, APIs and interfaces, but uh, um, as I said, refining it over the years to the point where it's pretty solid and robust. As long as you can struggle through the the Microsoft regime of installing drivers and and uh, Windows updates that overwrite the registry and things like that, there's there's some configuration headaches that come from the fact that you're using a modem. Um, 
but it's a pretty solid, robust way of doing voice communications. Twilio um, is something that we started doing because we needed a, um, a hardware-less way of doing voice alarm notification. So if you're running an a AWS or a VM of some, a virtual machine of some kind, um, you need, well, you, you, it's good to have something that doesn't require that you plug a hardware device into it. Now, there are some alternatives to physically plugging a modem in. If you will really, really want to use a voice modem, you can use a, a, a digi um, box, which uh, has RS-232 connectors on it, and you connect to it via the network. So you can use virtual machines, connect physical modems that way, but you still need hardware to make that work. Um, Twilio uh, is, a, is a company used by, um, well, big companies all over the world. Uber, for example, um, it uses Twilio for, for a, lot of their, a lot of their stuff. And if you're, if you're looking in the uh, platform as a service world for telecommunications and voice communications, Twilio is essentially the big dog. Um, it, it also has the advantage for us in a, um, in a Windows environment, if you want to run VT SCADA as a service, um, SAPI, which is the Microsoft Text-to-Speech API, um, is not available in in the service um, space. It's only available in user space. So if you want to do text-to-speech on your machine, um, it's got to be with a logged-in user. With Twilio, um, we don't have to worry about that because the text-to-speech is being done by the Twilio service as opposed to locally on the machine. So it allows you to do uh, voice-based alarm notification and uh, still have VT SCADA running as a service. Um, I, have, I have mixed feelings about modems and the use of modems in general because, like I said, I think what we've got now is pretty solid. I'm pretty proud of how well it works, uh, given the environment it's got to work in. But modems and even landlines in general are kind of a dying technology. This is from uh, the Multitech website. Multitech, I don't like to recommend modems, but Multitech makes um, the, the products that I generally use myself for testing, and they're pretty reliable. But you can see, they're saying data line costs are, are gonna, gonna double over the next 12 months. Service is getting worse. Um, just to drive the point home a little bit, this is broadband versus dial-up. Blue line at the bottom is, is, uh, is dial-up. This, this uh, graph is five years old. I wasn't able to find something more recent. Um, there are still a few people out there using dial-up modems, but it's tailing away. And again, landline phones. I don't know if they're going to die in five years, 10 years, or 20 years, but they're definitely on a glide path. So it's, it's worth thinking about alternatives. So I've already spoken to most of this, but it's, it's, um, Twilio is not very expensive as a solution. It's a lot cheaper than a, than a landline is. It's a, it's a dollar a month for a phone number and then um, a penny a minute for voice, penny a text. Um, pretty inexpensive. Pretty inexpensive solution. Okay, this is the exciting part. Um, I'm not going to spend time um, showing you a voice modem or probably, we're probably not gonna have time to get to email. I'm sure most of you know how that works anyways. So I'm going to take the time to fire up um, 
an app, a test application, and we're going to configure Twilio on it and make a call to a volunteer in the audience. So if I can reach my mouse, it's kind of stuck down in there. Um, okay, I'm going to start here. I'm going to add a realm. I'm going to call the, the realm Twilio. I hope that's not too confusing. We could call it Bob if we wanted to, but um, okay. I'll have, to, I'll have to come back to this. Ah. Let's make a new application. Start it up. I'm going to secure the application. Um, very secure. Password is A, username is A. Now, I'm going to add another account, and just to avoid confusion, we'll call it Twilio again. Actually, I'm going to call it Twilio user. Uh, password is Ardvark. Okay. And I'm only adding one privilege here. Internet client access, that's all we need. Everything else um, should be um, unselected because that's all we need for this. This is, this is so that we can um, have, have some credentials that we give, give to Twilio when we configure it. Um, when we get a volunteer, we'll add the volunteer to a roster, but uh, for the time being, we're not going to do that. Um, now. Because we're doing a live demo and I don't have a, I don't have a, a domain name configured and that's something that we need, I use a tool called ngrok. And what it does is it, it, uh, it, it's an HTTP tunneling um, utility helper or something like that. I recommend that you not use this without talking to your IT people because they may not appreciate having a hole right through all their firewalls. Um, but in an, in an application like this, it's, uh, it's pretty safe. Um, so I'm just going to set up port forwarding here. So it's uh, MGROC. Okay, there we go. So we'll, we'll be able to use that as our domain name, um, the 0234eccngrok.io when we, when we get to that stage of the configuration. So let's go into edit properties here. We'll go to alarms. I don't wanna have to wait five minutes uh, in the demo, so we're gonna change that to five seconds. And then we'll go down and enable Twilio. And I have my Twilio account open here. Um, there, if you, if you go and um, create your own Twilio account, you can create an account for free, but when you make calls, it'll have an annoying, this is a trial account um, being spoken at the beginning of every voice utterance. And it, it's pretty cheap to just put 10 bucks or so on, on the account just for making calls with. Also, you'll need to configure a phone number, which is a dollar a month expense. They give you a phone number to use for test purposes, but you, 
you may want your own phone number for, for uh, playing around with. So I'm going to copy the SID. Copy the auth token here. These are these are credentials from uh, your Twilio account. Now I'm going to go to ngrok and uh, there we go. So I'm just going to copy that domain that that they gave me. Um, they're fairly useful, and if you if you do want to use them, they you can pay them to host your domain name and do your own tunneling um, if that's something you want to do. But normally, you would sort out um, a fixed IP with a with a domain with your IT people. I'm just again, I'm just using ngrok because it's convenient in this sort of uh, okay. And let's see, did I add a realm? I have a realm called Twilio. I need to add my application here. So I've got a realm set up in the internet client server setup. So the same kind of access you would use for configuring the, the VIC or the Anywhere client. Um, so this becomes Twilio. Our VT SCADA username was Twilio user. My password was Ardvark. And that should be all the configuration we need. Now, bring up the um, Idea Studio. to add a roster tag. Roster tag. And I need a volunteer from the middle of the room. Anybody? I'm going to pick you, yes. Um, yeah, let, what's your name? John. John. I'm going to start with putting you in here. I'm going to add you as a user. I'm going to just save this, add you as a user to the app, um, and come back to this. So... Um, I'm giving you one, two, three as a password here. Um, and uh, alternate identific identification defaults to four characters, so we're going to make that one, two, three, four. Okay. And we're going to make John a super user. Not necessary in this case, but that's that's how we're going to set it up. Um, so let's go back, find our roster. We're going to add John and put him into um, the security field here. And what's your phone number? Is that right? Okay, so let's let's draw this. Okay. 
The alarm list already defaults to the history list, which is what we want. So we'll select our roster, and let's hope this works. If you could put it on speaker, that'd be great. System, there is definitely one priority alarm. Please enter your ID number followed by the number key. So one, two, three, four, followed by the number key. Let's press one. And then asterisk. Just press the asterisk key, the star key. So you can see we've we've uh, acknowledged our alarm, and uh, that's really all there is to it. Okay, um, NGROC is a is a pretty useful tool. I'm going to change the roster a little bit here. Um, I'm going to change John so that he's uh, getting an SMS text instead of a voice call. So. I just sent John, um, well, I just raised an alarm, and John should have gotten an SMS um, with the alarm. There it is. OK, if you could just copy um, that um, text you received and, and uh, reply to it with the copied text, and we should get our alarm code back. I usually just, when a text comes in, I just hold my thumb down on it, and the menu will come up and say, copy text, and then I just paste it in and send it. It does have to be those six, six digits included in the body of the text. Sorry, the question was, um, can you just copy the text and, and paste it into the reply? And the answer is yes. You don't have to just have only the six, the six digits, but you can. There we go. We, there's our acknowledge. Yeah, if you look. Uh, if you look at how we configured that contact, we put the contact username in here. If you don't fill in the username, then, they, then they'll get the notification, but they won't get an acknowledge code, and they won't be able to acknowledge the alarm. So we spent most of our time talking about Twilio um, stuff. As I, as I said, we actually have three different ways of sending text messages and two different ways of sending voice, and, and uh, uh, we also do alarm notification by email as well. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any questions, but I think we're almost out of time. I, th I think we're almost out of time, but I'm um, around. I'll be in the developer's den and happy to field any, any questions there as well. Thanks a lot, guys.